Yeah, I'm so proud of this window, and I'm envisioning uh, you know 19 of these uh, windows filled with this beautiful stained glass. The first one here is of uh, Pier Giorgio Frassati. Not maybe a household name, but he should be. He's someone that John Paul II loved, and John Paul beatified him. Frassati was born in 1901. He was the uh, son of kind of tepidly Catholic parents, but oddly, he had this intense uh, spiritual life. He died very young. He died in 1925, the age of 24. After ministering to the poor, and he picked up a form of polio that was extremely uh, virulent, and it killed him within a matter of days. But Frassati was known as a very vibrant, very athletic uh, man full of life and energy. So the photograph you often see of him, and we base the window on that, is Frassati up in the mountains. So he's from Torino up in northern Italy and loved to climb the Alps. So you see him there with the mountain range behind him and his, his climbing staff. We decided to have it as a, a flowering staff, which is an old biblical symbol, the staff of Aaron flowers, the staff of Joseph flowers. So it's to signal that Frassati is not just an earthly figure, but now he's a heavenly figure. Notice, please, he's got his hiking boots on and everything and the hiking pants, but in his hand he has a little loaf of bread, and that symbolizes his concern for the poor. So what he was known for was two, really two things. One was intense prayer, especially before the Blessed Sacrament. He'd spend hours before the Blessed Sacrament, which is why in the lower window here, the scene from his life, we have him precisely in that attitude before the Blessed Sacrament. But he was also known for his concrete care for the poor, and that's why he carries the loaf of bread. Notice, please, in his pocket, we have that little uh, pipe. In most photos of him, he has this pipe, and he's kind of a jaunty figure. But we thought in heaven he wouldn't be smoking his pipe, so we just put it in his pocket. And then above the pocket, that beautiful little motto associated with him. Verso l'alto, in Italian means, to the heights. And there's a famous photograph of him, and he's, he's climbing this very sheer mountain face. And he's climbing up, you know, his, you can't really see anything above him or below him. And then he scribbled on that um, picture with his own handwriting, verso l'alto, you know, go to the heights. Well, of course, that's from the gospel too, isn't it? Is go out into the depths, Jesus says. Same in, in Latin, duc in altum, go out into the, into the height or the depth. The word is, is the same, altum. So here, verso l'alto means go to the heights, you know, of the spiritual life. Some of the symbols now associated with him, on all the windows is going to be this border that expresses symbolically uh, important aspects of the saint's life. So here we have the little dog with the torch in his mouth. That's a symbol of the Dominican order. He was a third order, a lay uh, Dominican. That was the dream that Dominic's mother had when she was pregnant with him, that, that he'd be this dog running with a torch in his mouth. And the idea was spreading the fire of the gospel around. <clears throat> Notice, please, the... Um, the flower on here is the lily of the valley, which is symbolic of purity, so one of his great virtues. Here you've got the eight-pointed star. It's the uh, Maltese uh, cross, and that's because it's a symbol of the Beatitudes. And John Paul said that Frassati was, above all, a man of the Beatitudes, the eight Beatitudes, the eight points. The diamond there is also a symbol of his purity. The monstrance, that's his preoccupation with uh, prayer before the Blessed Sacrament. Here's a symbol I love. In the original design, they put a mountain in there, again, for mountain climbing, but we felt that having the mountain here and there would be too much. So it's a subtle transposition. In the Old Testament, the mountain is the mountain of the Lord's house. So all the tribes go up to the mountain of the Lord's house. What's the Lord's house but the temple in Jerusalem, from which water will flow for the renewal of the world? Well, we decided to make the Mundelein main chapel the symbol for the temple. So there it is on top of the mountain. You know, I knew about Frassati, but in a kind of a vague way. But it was about a year ago, I was visiting Archbishop uh, Peter Sarton, who was the Archbishop of Seattle. I was up in his office, we were looking at his books and talking about what we, you know, had read in common. And there was a whole shelf of books about Frassati. And I said to him, you know, I, I know Frassati, but really not all that well. He said, oh, I love Frassati. You've got to read this, this, and that. And he gave me three books. Brought them back to my room. I read them that night and the next day. And... Uh, you know, I got sort of caught up in the Frassati spirit. So when this window was, uh, was finished, I took a photo of it, just on my eye camera, and sent it to um, Archbishop uh, Sarton. Well, it turns out that Sarton knows Frassati's niece, who's now about 87 years old, she's still alive, and he sent her uh, uh, the photo of this window. 
And she sent back this wonderful email, just exulting in the beauty of the window, and she said, it looks just like him. And she's so happy that he's going to be inspiring a new generation of seminarians. So that really warmed my heart to know that this window has been approved by Frasati's own niece. He's up on the front wall. This is the west wall, but the students worshiping out here will be able to see you know, all the windows from various angles, but everybody will see these four windows. So we put a lot of thought into which four saints would be up here. Frasati is the patron of World Youth Day. So one of John Paul's great contributions was the introduction of World Youth Day, where young people from all over the world gather to celebrate their Catholic faith. Frasati is the patron of World Youth Day. I'm envisioning now, again, generations of young men coming to this chapel, young men about his age. So the typical student here is, what, 24, 25? It's his age. And they're looking at someone just like them who gave himself radically to prayer to service the poor. So that's why I wanted him there, that he would speak especially to these young men who would be inhabiting this chapel.